Good morning, everyone. Today is the 23rd of November, 2022, and we've been working through the book of Acts find that there are many lessons that we can learn through the instruction of Paul and the apostles in the New Testament church. Today we're going to be discussing the 18th chapter of Acts. Very many interesting lessons learned here. And after I make some comments, I'll have Mark uh, read this chapter to you. It talks about part, Paul departing from Athens after he priest at Athens, we talked about that yesterday, and he came to Corinth, and he found a certain Jew named Aquila that was born in Pontus, and he was there with his, uh, he, he was from Italy with his wife Priscilla, and, um, and anyway, here it talks about the fact that Paul was a tent maker. Paul continued to reason in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. Can you imagine today if somebody who was a Christian went into the synagogue of the Jews and tried to reason with them out of the scriptures? They would be kicked out on their ear, wouldn't they? They would probably be arrested. And it says, Silas and Timothy were come from Macedonia. Paul was pressed in the Spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. And it says, when the Jews opposed themselves and blasphemed, Paul shook his raiment and said unto them, Your blood be on your own heads. I am clean. I'm going to go into the Gentiles. So the Jews that he was re tried to reason with here blasphemed against Christ and Paul um, said your blood be on your own heads and uh, anyway um, we find that Paul entered into a fellow's house that was joined to the synagogue I don't know what all that means but anyway his name was Justice and um chief ruler of the synagogue, Crispus, believed on the Lord with all his house. And many of the Corinthians believed and were baptized. So it wasn't all unbelievers that Paul was speaking to here. Some were, again, believers. And, you know, Paul had had a night vision and came to him and told him, Be not afraid. Speak, hold not your peace. I am with thee. No man shall set on thee to hurt thee, for I have much people in this city. And so because of that reason, Paul continued there a year and six months teaching the word of God among them. And we had a guy by the name of Galileo. Galileo, he was the deputy of Achaia, um, the Jews had made an insurrection with one accord against Paul and brought him to the judgment seat and saying, This fellow is persuaded men to worship God contrary to the law. Does that sound familiar? <clears throat> and when Paul was now about to open his mouth, Galileo said unto the Jews, If it were a matter of wrong of wicked lewdness or ye Jews, reason would be that I should bear with you. But if it be a question of words and names and of your laws, Look you to it, I will be no judge of such matters. And he drove them from the judgment seat. And so then all the Greeks took Sosthenes, the chief ruler of the synagogue, and beat him before the judgment seat. And Galileo cared for none of those things. And Paul tarried there a good while and took his leave of the brethren and sailed into Syria with him, Priscilla and Aquila, having shorn his head in century, for he had a vow. And he came to Ephesus and left them there, but he himself entered into a synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. So everywhere he went, Paul went into the synagogues. And now we have an account that he went into Ephesus in the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews there. And when they desired him to tarry no, 
tarry longer with him, he consented not, but bade them farewell, saying, I must all, by all means, keep this feast. And he went through. I will return again if God will. And he sailed unto Ephesus. And when he had landed at Caesarea and gone up and saluted the church, he went down to Antioch. And after some time, he departed and went over all the country of Galatia and Phygeria in order strengthening all the disciples. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born of Alexander, an eloquent man, mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the Lord, and being fervent in spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, and when Aquila and Priscilla had heard him, they took him unto them and expounded him the way of God more perfectly. Now, I want to share something here of a personal note. This particular passage of Scripture here where it says that... Um, Aquila and Priscilla took uh, him unto them and expounded on him the way of God more perfectly. This is often a justification to to justify women teachers, this particular passage. In fact, it brought a defellowshipping of me with um, a man and a woman who held very strongly to this position that they had a right to straighten people out. Uh, in the scriptures and this in no way is endorsing women ministers there's no way that um, Aquila and Priscilla would ever come against Paul's teaching about let the women be silent in the churches I think this is referring to the fact that this man had not um he it says that um, he only knew the baptism of John. He didn't even know the history of Christ and his death on the cross and his perfect sacrifice and so on. And so I think what happened is they invited him over to their house and I think it was probably principally Aquila who expounded on him the way of God more perfectly. It wasn't Priscilla. She may have been there, but I don't think she was spouting off at the mouth and circumventing what her husband was saying. Um, and when he was disposed to pass into Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him, who when he was come helped them much, which... He had believing through grace, for he mightily convinced the Jews and that publicly showing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. And so this shows the, all of the endeavors of Paul going into all these different synagogues and teaching. We don't have any record of Jesus. I mean, I'm sorry, we have no record of Paul going into the synagogues with a woman and having him instruct and reason with the Jews. We have no, absolutely no example of that at all. And uh, so I'm going to turn this over to Mark and have him read through this. These things Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth. Found that certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy, and his wife Priscilla. Because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them, because he was the same craft, he bowed with them and wrought, for by their occupation they were tent makers. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath, persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. And Silas and the Mophius were come from Macedonia. Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. When they opposed themselves and blasphemed, he shook his raiment and said to them, Your blood be upon your old heads. I am clean from henceforth. I will go with the Gentiles. He departed thence, entered into a certain man's house named Justice, one that worshiped God, whose house joined heart, the synagogue. Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed in the Lord with all his house, and many of the Corinthians, hearing believed, were baptized. 
Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision, Be not afraid, but speak, and hold not thy peace. For I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee, for I have much people in this city. And he continued there a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. When Galileo, Galileo was a deputy of Achaia, the Jews made insurrection one accord against Paul and brought him to the judgment seat. And this fellow persuaded men to worship God contrary to the law. And when Paul was now about to open his mouth, Galileo said unto the Jews, If it were a matter of wrong or wicked lewdness, O ye Jews, reason would that I should bear with you. But if it be a question of words and names and of your law, look ye to it, for I will be no judge in such matters. He draw and drave them from the judgment seat. Then all the Greeks took softness to chief ruler of the synagogue and beat him before the judgment seat in Galileo and cared for none of those things. And Paul after this tarried there yet a good while and then took his leave of the brethren and sailed thence into Syria and with him Priscilla and Quilla having shorn his head in Chancheria for he had a vow. He came to Ephesus and left him there but he himself into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. When they desired him to tarry longer time with them, he consented not, but bade them farewell, saying, I must by all means keep this feast that coming in Jerusalem, but I will return again unto you, if God will, and he sailed from Ephesus. When he landed at Caesarea and got up and saluted the church, he went down to Antioch. And after he had spent some time there, he departed and went over all the country of Galatia and Fergie in order, strengthening all the disciples. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, who when Quilla and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them, expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. When he was disposed to pass in Decaia, the brethren wrote exhorting disciples to receive him, who, when he was come, helped them much which had believed through grace. For he mightily convinced the Jews, and that publicly showing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. Thank you, man. Yes. Well, I hope you all have a good Thanksgiving today, tomorrow. God bless.